My sisters and I were spared from female circumcision when we were children growing up in Liberia. Our parents didn't practice it, but a lot of people around us did. Not until many years later did I make the connection between what I knew as female circumcision and what the world calls female genital mutilation or cutting, FGMC. I was shocked to learn that the girls I had seen in Liberia walking around with white chalk drawn all over their bodies and beads around their waists and breasts had experienced it. I asked my mother, what happened to those girls? She responded, they were in the graber bush. As a child, I wanted to go to the graber bush and be like those girls, but my mother never allowed it. Now, decades later, I find myself advocating against FGM, while Liberia remains a practicing country. Girls are still taken into the graper bush, and too many deaths occur. In 2013, a six-year-old girl lost her life during the act. In 2017, a 16-year-old died due to infection. One woman died in childbirth and her baby was stillborn. Those stories became personal to me. They haunted me. I took them to bed with me and thought about the many what ifs. What if I had been born to a different family in Liberia? My colleagues and I identified two areas we could help with. First, the psychological pain that women told me they were feeling by building a counseling program and providing support groups. Second, the physical pain by raising funds so women who want it can get clitoral restorative surgery. I also train and teach school nurses and law enforcement on FGMC so they will be aware of it. When I see the women we assist becoming more comfortable with sharing their own stories, my memory goes back to the girls with chalked and beaded bodies and to the change we are making together. <laughs>